when you were backing out, what exactly did you do to make sure that you were safe to drive back out? I looked through out? my mirrors before I backed up. You looked in your mirror? Uh, I could see straight through the back. Well, when you say straight through the back, which mirror are you talking about? The one from the, not the driver's side, but the passenger side. You mean the side mirror? Uh-huh, that I could see. What about the rear view That one mirror? you could look straight back to, sir. You, you saw straight back? Mm-hmm. This truck sits higher than a Honda Civic, am I, I correct? I believe so, yes. So is it possible that when you looked out the mirror, you didn't see the Honda because it was a smaller car? It could be possible. Now, Mr. Huerta. Yes. You said that you originally wanted to be cooperative with Ms. Jacques and Mr. Worley, but he insulted you. No, no, that's later That's on what you said. In... They were insulted by the quotes that I gave them. My beef has never been a denial of payment or right. trying to escape from responsibility. My thing was the red flags that were coming up and how he approached... And the red flags were you, you claimed he approached... that he told you that it was totaled, the... that the damages might have I mean... been exaggerated. You wanted to have it checked yourself to make sure okay. the estimate was accurate? Now here's... I'm sorry, Your Honor, but here's the disrespect part. We've never met. I've never seen him. I didn't speak to the man until two, three months later. At the request, continuously telling Alita... Objection, Your Honor. Telling oh, oh, oh. Alita <laughs> to have him, to give him my number to call me, right? Yeah. Now, the way he came at her, at her was disrespectful, right? I mean, using foul language for one. And in all my years of driving, I've never had anybody approach me um, with the first thing coming out of my mind is, you have any money on you? The first thing that I would do is just get the yeah, information. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. But you weren't the victim of an accident. I'm driving my girlfriend's car. Now I got to explain to her what happened. And she had to lay out a lot of money. So he must have been very up upset. Well, that's understandable. But, but what you said was that he questioned you. He, he, he said to you that, I don't want your homeboys looking right, at my okay. car. Now, he had no idea what kind of a person I am, right? Did you say or, that? Or, that? You didn't or, want his homeboys I mean, checking I, um, your car? That is not true. You sure now? That is Mr. not true. Never. Said that. It went deeper than that. On top of the homeboy thing, he goes, I'm not going to be taking my very expensive car to a backyard mechanic in a ghetto area that I have no clue of. And I'm thinking, how dare you? You don't even know me. You know, you, you can feel disrespected, and I'm not saying that the plaintiff deliberately disrespected you. Okay. But if there's liability here, it doesn't excuse that liability. In other words, that's not an well, offset. I understand that. Okay. But again, I tried everything in my power to work with the gentleman. And where I stopped being interested in the way he's functioning was the constant badgering of Elita. The second week of the accident, he's calling her, telling her, you got to come up with $400. Now, $400 for what? I have not seen an estimate. We hadn't spoken man to man first as far as, you know, this is who I am and this is who you are. When I finally got a hold of him to talk to him, he was just interested in what are you going to do to fix my car? I said, I'll tell you what. It became something more than what it was, simply an accident. Well, to me, it became a game of, well, how much money can I swindle off this victim? Mm -hmm.